everyone. There are constant lawsuits and failures, and everywhere Harry is being concluded to be a liar. He is trying to repeat stupid mistakes in the hope that the results will be different, but in reality, it all leads to a bad ending scenario. Harry is a liar and he lost the case. Still a familiar scenario. Harry and Meghan are lying, scheming frauds, grifters, con artists, and psychos. Once again, the New York chase was hotly discussed as Harry brought it up to argue in court. And welcome back to the Royal News 365 channel, my thirsty friends. As you know, recently the court declared that the decision of the Executive Committee for the Protection of Royalty and Public Figures in arranging Harry's security was completely legal and contradicted Harry's allegations. He failed today to be granted judicial review. He is attempting to appeal this judgment. It is a matter of conjecture as to whether he will be granted that appeal immediately or whether the appeal will be refused. Any appeal can only be as to the application of the law by this judge. He can't ask for retrial and re-examination of the underlying facts. If refused the appeal, he can make an application for leave to appeal even then. If he were to be granted an appeal and win that appeal, all that would happen is that the committee, Executive Committee for the Protection of Royalty and Public Figures, have to sit down and make the decision again. Nothing to stop them from reaching the same conclusion. Slightly simplified, there are two layers of appeal courts. The first stop is the Court of Appeal, second and last stop the Supreme Court. The courts cannot tell the Home Office what to do. If he appeals, they will come to the same conclusion based on their own rules. I cannot understand why he brought the case. They can tell them the process was flawed and to rerun the decision-making. That is the effect of judicial review of administrative decisions. He is completely deranged if he thinks they will reach a different conclusion. It also said because of that, he will make no further comment he just doesn't want to be ridiculed for not gloating and to repeatedly be asked if he is still a dragon slayer when all types of judges and lawyers are calling him a liar. And Harry once again used the New York chase as a basis to defend his point of view. But even before this moment, when the chase was first published, there were countless reactions, and most of them thought that Harry and Meghan were lying. I would love to see the police report in question. We know there wasn't any car chase, let alone the high-speed near-catastrophic one. So what did the New York City Police Department write in their report? It is also possible that Harry was not supposed to be in New York for the fake car chase, and Meghan would tell him how she was hounded, just like Diana. She is that evil. You can see the fear in his eyes. The witch commandeered the whole incident, and Harry followed her into the cab like a lapdog. I believe she wanted to appear hounded to drive up her media value and take him towards a tunnel to relive his Diana experience, driving has no more under her thumb. It seems Harry bought the entire fabrication hook, line, and sinker. She plays on his fears and desires. She acts as a mommy figure because he misses his mother. She plays on his paranoia so she can feel important when he hires all the unnecessary bodyguards that Alisters don't even always use like inside an award show full of other celebrities. She had a smirk when photographed in her ugly dress inside the car that evening. According to the flow of events, some New York City paparazzi were present during the event that Harry and Meghan called the tragic chase, participated in an interview, and revealed many notable details. A man said Sussex's drivers made the situation dangerous, and Meghan was smiling during the debunked chase. Another pap said they were used as extras to create a Diana cliffhanger moment for a Sussex documentary. A paparazzo confirmed the information that TMZ ran a story saying there was a two-hour chase around Manhattan is fake news. He also said that the reality was that they were being used as extras for their documentary to create their cliffhanger Princess Diana moment. If what he said is true, then further evidence points to Harry and Meghan constantly playing the victim by lying. They created this entire setup faux car chase to clap back. See? We are important people. After being globally laughed at across all media platforms for using an Uber Eats driver on a scooter and stock video from a Harry Potter premiere in their mockumentary, a smart sinner pointed out some time ago 
that that was what the car chase story was for. And they were right. Imagine the story going like this. Harry said, Listen, Megan. We'll have to stage a car chase in New York so they pay for security. Then Megan said, That sounds great. I'm an actress, after all. I'm a director, too. I'll direct. And produce. From a source at the precinct, nobody thought they were being hounded by paparazzi. Everyone thought they were being histrionic and ridiculous. But they had to be professional and take it seriously. It was a big nothing. The release document says that the New York City Police Department said there was enough evidence to arrest two individuals. The report was redacted, so we don't know if the two individuals were Harry and Meghan. We don't know if anyone was arrested. Could those individuals be the paps? If I were a paparazzi, I'd tell them Markle called and the agency sent me with XYZ instructions. Didn't the paparazzi agency even criticize the Harkles because of something? I can't remember what it was. Maybe the Harkles wanted to hide the pictures because the chase was so obviously not a chase as reflected in the images. I want the names of those who were arrested and the status of what happened regarding the criminal charges. I was pretty certain it got dropped because they realized no one believed them, so they wanted it to fade away. Of course, I hope they shared the images of them sitting in the back seat without seat belts, and the part of the story where they decided to get out of one car and into another. They do think everyone is as detached from reality as they are. I am really tickled to find out they used the fake car chase to try and sway the court's judgment. Didn't work, did it? Interesting, if true. I always thought Megan set that up on her own. Harry looked genuinely distressed in those photos. He must be a better actor than I thought. Makes the fact that he was filming the whole thing, and their demand to have the photos and footage turned over even more explicable, though. He probably wanted to produce video evidence in court or something. Would love to see that New York City Police Department report. He lost. He lost. I thought this review was the final review of his case saying that the proper procedures weren't done in considering his first case for protection. Harry is never this good of an actor. And Megan's also the one who pushes him to do these court cases. He is way too stupid to be scheming like this. She is also stupid, but smarter than him, which is no achievement. That's why none of her scheming works. However, what happens in New York has no bearing on this ruling which pertains to England, Scotland, and Wales. This is stated as such in the judgment summary. Harry wanted internationally protected person status. In any event, the New York City chase and any real actions on behalf of the Paps have no bearing. I used to live in New York, and I remember telling my friends that the street seemed really busy and crowded and that traffic was really bad. Nobody knew or cared who was in the cars. In New York, nobody cares about celebrities. Especially those two. They are very minor players in this town. Everybody in New York City is a VIP in their minds or they couldn't live here. Photos that do not meet the requirements for their documentary will never be released. Doria is playing with her phone and Harry doing whatever. The dumbest part is that they got out of their own big blacked-out SUV to get into a taxi without any blackout windows. So afraid while smiling with no seatbelt, no, I was afraid I would never see my kids. Their thirst stunt could have put people's lives at risk. They should at least be fined and have to reimburse the New York City Police Department for the cost of wasting resources. The paparazzi were on bicycles and mopeds. How were they going to manage to cause a high-speed car chase? They might have been weaving in and out of slow-moving traffic to get photographs, but they weren't chasing these idiots at high speed through Manhattan. The two idiots caused all the backlash by releasing that ridiculously hyperbolic statement about it being near catastrophic. If they were truly being harassed, why not just quietly file a police report? But no, this was all about feeding their need for security narrative. I wonder if they had just quietly filed a police report, the outcome of the trial would have been better for them. If they had revealed in court, they had filed a police report but kept it under wraps to not encourage others. 
the staged pursuit may have been regarded as something that actually happened and therefore now has to be taken at face value as too much time has passed for it to be substantiated. Ha! And remember it didn't get any attention until Scobie announced it on Twitter. If it was real, we would have many videos released from the public because it would be such a spectacle. And where are Harry's photos and videos? We all saw he was recording. It's beyond reprehensible that he chose to do it in New York, the site of the most tragic security breach ever. Shameful. Just how self-involved do you have to be to make it okay with yourself? Does anyone know if there were any pictures of Harry and Meghan in the non-taxi portion of the chase? Because typicality being in a blacked-out SUV would prevent any photos from being taken. Remember how Meghan had to roll down the window of her armored car in the UK to be visible? If they had stayed only in the SUV, there would have been zero photos of them. This leads me to believe that the only reason they got into that cab was because they wanted their picture taken. You know how paparazzi will yell nasty things and get aggressive with celebrities to try and provoke them to get a shot of the celebrity snarling or yelling back. It's mind-blowing that Harkle Security was doing that to the paparazzi trying to manipulate them the way paps manipulate celebrities. What if it had escalated as Megan wanted? If an incident had occurred and people were injured, I think she would have been happy at that. Even if it was Harry or Doria, as long as she wasn't hurt. The drama of it all in her thinking proves their need for internationally protected person status. This is some weird sick shit right here. She wasn't too worried, though, seeing as she couldn't hide her smile or wear a seatbelt. That's why I salute the judge for making his judgment. It's going to reopen a can of worms with the paparazzo's own accounts. So Harry thinking he'd hit pay dirt with this letter is going to be hoisted by his own petard once again. I thoroughly dislike the whining Harry can't stand him, the royal snob. I think he was set up by his wife and mother-in-law on the car chase in New York City and can't believe he doesn't see it. As the paparazzi guy said in the interview, Markle was smiling, which we saw in the pictures and videos. Plus Doria was sitting there playing with her phone with a not-a-care-in-world look. Harry did look freaked out face all red or flushed. It was a setup by mother and daughter, which was a very cruel thing to do to Harry. He is a fool if he hasn't figured this out. All three still have major karma due to them. When I look at the real royals, they are in real danger, but they don't overdo it or demand more security for themselves. I remember that Princess Anne was held up at gunpoint in an actual kidnap attempt and still doesn't have 24-7 taxpayer protection. They will get protection if deemed necessary, as they should. So I think it all comes down to Meghan and Harry wanting bodyguards because it's simply a status symbol for them. She's got no talent, no fame, and no interest, but a few bodyguards and a backward photographer make them feel they are superior. The smug look on her face when she was first dating him and would get snapped tells it all. It's simply a show of perceived status, and she loves it. She just doesn't want to pay. She's still a no one. It's just her audacity and entitlement believing she's made it, and from her rented Toronto apartment now needs more than a wing at Admiralty House, Australia, or part of Windsor Castle. And Harry is willing to do anything to serve his lovely wife. Wasn't there a rumor he wasn't supposed to be there that night? Also, she's wound him up so much about her dying like his mother, he's become neurotic. He also unsurprisingly used the mother card and strangely thinks he is of the status he once was and still serving the tax-paying public. You can imagine them sitting somewhere saying, we need evidence. We have your mom, Harry. And he did. When doesn't this sicko use his mother's death for his gain? He wants us to feel sorry for him and believe he's still saddened by her death all these years later. But all I feel is disgust for this lying, grifting, opportunistic loser. He and his equally horrific wife do not have the emotional capacity to think beyond themselves. I feel very sorry for their children. They don't stand a snowball's chance in hell of coming out of their tragic childhoods without a shit ton of emotional damage. But when they come out with their autobiographies, 
I'll be here for it unless Mommy and Daddy Dearest have them sign non-disclosure agreements as they do with everyone else. And even though he used every card, the final verdict of the court was not on his side. So Harry was not satisfied and wanted to appeal. However, one cannot appeal indefinitely until they get the ruling they want. He's becoming a nuisance. One needs grounds to appeal, not just dissatisfaction. Nothing has changed. He can't appeal a fake. I think appeal is the only legal term. Even Sherborne must know there will be no appeal. Harry just doesn't want to admit defeat, and by saying appeal, he thinks we will forget that he lost. Just like Harry does not answer questions about African parks, in Griftus funding and payment for him and Megan, and all his other scandals. And believe me, he certainly never stopped nor stopped suing. If he lets go of this, he lets go of being royal or something special. He really does not want to be a just Harry. That was just something he said to make ordinary people like him. How Harry tries to sue for his status and importance is a hard watch. Nothing, no lawsuit, no divorce, no return to royal duties can bring back what he gave up just because he threw a tantrum. This is why he's supposedly planning another trip back to the UK so he can stage another car chase or some other terrible near-fatal catastrophe. See? See? I told you this would happen. He is a proven liar many times over. I am glad the court saw through his attempt to persuade them with a fake video. This was the correct ruling. He can pout all he wants, but the appeal will fail. Let's take a look at some of the allegations and facts that Harry has hidden. Behind Wellchild Awards Paparazzi Car Chase is a false claim, Harry lied. Behind Manhattan Catastrophic Paparazzi Car Chase is a false claim, Harry lied. And even Harry's visa hearing looks set to come down to him lying in his memoir about his drug use. Too many lies here. But he still said he would appeal. I seriously question what he thinks is going to happen. He keeps throwing money at these cases, swelling them with more time and resources until they burst with a crazy cost, and for a lot of them, he loses. He's not got a current stream of income. He's having to borrow from Invictus, isn't he? They spend, spend, spend. Borrow, borrow, borrow. Ask for discounts and freebies everywhere they go. Even the lavish Duchess has been scaling down her wardrobe costs recently to lower price brands and pieces from previous seasons. Well, they were trying to stick sunshine sacks with a two million bill that went unpaid for quite some time. She finally had to relent and pay them off to get a new firm to represent her. So his UK lawyers shouldn't be surprised if their billings going forward remain unpaid. Think of the headlines then. Deadbeat Harry doesn't pay his bills. They have nothing lined up for the future except this rumored memoir and promised podcast from him on this unheard of platform. But remember how long Archetypes and Spare took to debut? Years in the final moments of their contracts when they got pressured to do some work. I don't get his strategy of pushing more and more on appeals for reasonable decisions, most of which end up not in his favor again. This fool. Always throwing good money after bad. In what universe does he think an appeal will get him anywhere? Especially knowing the Executive Committee for the Protection of Royalty and Public Figures will probably just deny him again if they are forced to revisit it. The world knows why Harry and Meghan want internationally protected person status. The point is that courts of law are just that. Law courts, and they are satisfied that no unlawfulness has been committed regarding their original decision in denying Harry internationally protected person status. This appeal was rejected, but he's now appealing against it. He is no longer effectively a royal, much less a working royal, and he spends next to no time in the UK. Whilst here he can and should organize his security when attending events that do not involve the royal family. What is his problem? More to the point, and I guess this is why Harry wants internationally protected person status, is the fact that the taxpayer in any country where he might be will pick up the tab for his high-level security expensive. Even when they visit dirt-poor countries on one of their many humanitarian visits, that country will pay for its security. The money could and should go towards its people. 
Internationally protected person status is not given according to status. It is given if there is a clear and present danger to life. All royals automatically have it when in the company of senior royals, as do visiting heads of state and dignitaries. Many royals do not have it as a matter of course, even though a kidnap attempt at gunpoint was made on Princess Anne many years ago. Internationally protected person would have given Harry many privileges, doesn't he have an ongoing battle over his visa application slash possible deportation, various other lawsuits, possible investigations into charities he supports, and possible tax anomalies? All speculative but gives an idea of how protected he could be in certain areas. If Harry had succeeded in his appeal, make no mistake, this would have been another step towards his half-in, half-out quest. He lives in the U.S., the citizens will pick up the bill. Harry is not a working royal, and he wants special privileges. Like I always say, the world doesn't work that way. Harry can't dream about things that will never happen, and then when the harsh reality hits, he whines that he's the victim. Finally, although anyone can announce their intent to appeal, the court may refuse to hear more of the Prince of Lie, especially since he owes the British people more money than he has. He knew that going in. But the professional winger will play the victim over and over and over again. We will never see the grifters stop. That brings us to the end of this video. Do you agree with my opinion? Please comment to let us know your opinion. Don't forget to like and share the video so YouTube can recommend similar videos. And if you want to receive notifications about the latest videos, please subscribe. We will be back soon. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.